Hello and welcome back to That's English. We're at the end of Module 5, so it's time for some revision. That's right. Let's start with Unit 1. In Unit 1, we met a group of friends from different countries and they talked about present states and habits. For example, I come to the studio by bus. And I do my exercises every morning before the programme. Let's watch some examples. Nowadays, everyone uses these kind of shops. Well, I love curry, but we still make English Sunday lunch. My children feel more British than I do. They go to English school, like football more than cricket. <laughs> <laughs> and they speak better English than Urdu. We also saw people describing actions in the present. For example, Ashley and I are presenting the programme right now. Let's watch some more examples from the episode. Oh, the chefs are making the pizzas. <laughs> it's a good location and people are sitting outside. I'm wearing a hijab. It's very comfortable. Globalisation is happening all around us. We are living in a global society. In Unit 2, Claire and her students visited a museum and we saw people describing past events. For example, I went to a science museum when I was a student. Let's watch. I went to a natural history museum when I was a kid. It was really, really boring. Anyway, for over two centuries, scientists have met and worked in this building and they've discovered and developed all sorts of things. While he was studying chemistry and physics here, he worked with lots of other scientists and inventors. 66 years later, the first man walked on the moon. We also saw people talking about habits and routines in the past. For example, I used to be a very bad student. Watch. It's called the Faraday Museum because the famous scientist Michael Faraday used to work here. Yeah, that's right. I mean, people used to cook on fires and there were no electric lights. I mean, what did people used to do before the internet was invented? Me too. Before the internet. I didn't used to know anything. A hundred years ago, we travelled by horse and carriage. Let's move on. In Unit 3, they were filming a TV programme at Cafe 27 and we learnt different ways to talk about life in the future. That's right. First, we saw people talking about plans and arrangements. For example, I'm going to the cinema next weekend. Let's watch some examples from the episode. When are they arriving? Are we going to make food for them? Don't worry, Bill. Yes, we're providing food, but only tea and sandwiches. The three people are going to tell Clark and Deborah about some new ideas and inventions. I agree, because I'm only giving my money to an invention that's more exciting than anything we've seen before. <laughs> I'm going to try that at home. I'm going to put leftover food on the compost. And remember, when we talk about a definite arrangement, we use the present continuous. For example, I'm going to the hairdressers today at 10 o'clock. Then we saw people making predictions about the future. For example, I don't think 2013 will be a good year. Mm, come on, Ashley, don't be superstitious. I think this will be a very good year for everyone. Let's watch again. Who will use this device? Everyone. People with disabilities will be able to control their own lives more effectively. Well, I won't make any money. They will generate their own electricity through solar panels on the roofs. In Unit 4, we talked about sports and we looked at different modal verbs for expressing possibility. That's right. For example, I might visit some friends on Saturday. And I could come with you. Let's watch again. Do you think you might win this evening, Jess? Well, we could. I mean, we're playing well at the moment. No, my team must win. We're the champions. Not long ago, the, the only place you could actually have a bet was on the High Street Bookmaker. We also saw people talking about ability. For example, Annabelle can swim very well. And Ashley can play the guitar. Watch these clips. I can play on the left or the right. I can't really play on the left. I'd really like to be able to play tennis as well as you, Jess. I'd love to be able to share it with my tennis mates. Come on, 
You can do it! Hooray! We also saw people expressing willingness. Watch. Will you marry me? <laughs> no, I won't. Won't you change your mind? No, I won't. I definitely won't. In Unit 5, we talked about free time and leisure activities. That's right, Annabelle. And we learnt how to express opinions and preferences. First, opinions. Watch. I think this is a great way to spend the evening, you guys. I know that some people believe that Shakespeare didn't write his plays, but I don't agree. OK, it seems that was a bad night. But what about the book club? We're right by the sea, so I suppose visitors come for the water activities. Mm. Remember, we can express preferences in different ways. For example, I like spending my holidays at the beach. And I love to dance at the weekends. Watch. Yes, but I prefer to dance with people who can dance. I prefer watching modern drama. But Shakespeare's OK. I love being in the open air. We also saw people asking for information. For example, who wrote Don Quixote, Annabelle? That's easy. Cervantes wrote Don Quixote. Watch again. Who asked that question? Who called the police? Which are the most popular? So now let's continue with Unit 6. Oh, I liked this unit. It's all about holidays and travel. We saw people making hypotheses about probable situations. For example, if the friends plan their holiday carefully, they will have a great time. Remember, with this type of conditional, we can use different modal verbs like can, may and should. If they don't plan their holiday carefully, they may have problems. Watch. We'll need some warm clothes if we're going to go to Nepal and Tibet. If you take all of this, you may have to pay for excess baggage at every airport. Hmm, they're OK. But if you're travelling to Southeast Asia, you should buy the Lonely World Guide. Fortunately, if you don't have a lot of money, you can usually find hostels and very basic hotels. We also saw the friends making hypotheses about imaginary or unreal situations. For example, if I had more money, I would go on a cruise to the Caribbean islands. Watch. If you could be anywhere in the world right now, where would you choose? Well, if it was my first round-the-world trip, I'd definitely go to Hanoi in Vietnam. If I were you, I'd go by train. In Unit 7, we looked at another of Ashley's favourite subjects, food. Mmm. And we saw some different ways of giving advice. You should always try to eat a healthy, balanced diet. And you shouldn't eat too much fast food. You ought to eat a lot of vegetables. Let's watch some examples from the episode. Mmm. Now that is really tasty. You really ought to try a little. You don't look well. You'd better sit down. OK. I eat too much fast food with too many calories. You ought to change your diet. Yes, you really should go to cookery classes with the TV chef. Oh, yes, they know they should have better food and they want more flavour. When the people were making their recipes in the episode, we saw them classifying and expressing quantity. When I cook, I don't need a recipe. I just add some of this ingredient, a few of these, a little bit of that ingredient, a pinch of salt, a spoonful of sugar. Um, and does it taste good, Ashley? No! <laughs> Let's watch the chef again. We have some fresh fruit and vegetables here. There is plenty of milk and cheese. Don't use too many eggs. I'm afraid I only put in half a spoonful of olive oil. In Unit 8, we went back to school and learnt different ways of expressing obligation. Annabelle must rest a lot until her baby is born. Let's watch. You must also learn the uses of radiation. Why do we have to have this teacher? Don't say another word or you will be required to go and see the principal. You have to spend a lot of time planning. 
Then we learnt how to express prohibition. You mustn't smoke in here. Watch. You mustn't bring your mobile into the classroom. You are not allowed to use your mobile in class. The principal doesn't let you use it, I'm sure. We also saw people expressing permission. For example, you are allowed to use your notes in the exam. Watch. They let the students wear what they like. They're allowed to wear anything. And finally, we saw people expressing lack of obligation. For example, you don't need to study this subject for the exam. Watch. You don't need to shout out. They're not required to wear school uniform at Rosebury Park School. In Unit 9, there was a salsa class at Café 27, and we learnt about social behaviour. We saw people making invitations. Would you like to introduce the clips, Ashley? OK. Let's watch some examples from the episode. Tomorrow, would you like to be my dance partner? Shall we dance? Can I invite you to do another class next week? We also saw people accepting invitations in different ways. Would you like to have coffee later, Ashley? Thanks, Annabelle. I'd love to. Let's watch again. Great. It would be a pleasure. I would love to come. That is kind of you. you would you like to have a taste? I would. Go. <laughs> <laughs> we also saw different ways of rejecting invitations. Do you want to have lunch tomorrow, Annabelle? Thanks, Ashley, but I can't. I have a doctor's appointment. Let's watch some more examples. I would love to, but I'm afraid it's not possible. Well, that's very kind, but Jess and I are going to the Ra Ra Club. And to end the module in Unit 10, everybody enjoyed a romantic evening at Café 27. That's right, Annabelle. We saw people talking about the future and making predictions in different ways. For example, we know Annabelle is about to have her baby quite soon. Yes, but we don't know exactly when I'm going to have it. Let's watch some examples from the episode. We're about to have our first dating evening. Who knows? Maybe you are about to meet the love of your life. This is going to be fun. I think we're going to make a perfect couple. I haven't met the love of my life yet, but I'm hopeful that it's going to come soon by using this agency. We also saw people expressing future arrangements and plans in different ways. For example, I'm going on holiday as soon as we finish the module. And I'm staying at home. Let's watch again. I'm going to meet some friends from work. I'm not going to be long. We're having a quick drink at the pub. So get ready, because I'm taking you out tonight. We're going to go out for a romantic meal. But I'm coming back to Birmingham next year. Finally, we saw people expressing agreement and disagreement in different ways. Watch. It's difficult to meet people once you reach our age. I don't think so. Age is not important. You're right. I'm very busy, so I don't have time for a relationship. Me neither. Work is very important. I think so too. That's why I go speed dating. Me too. Let's hope so. I've really enjoyed helping you learn with That's English. Me too, Ashley. But that's all we have time for in Module 5. So until next time in Module 6, goodbye. Bye. See you.